So let's have a look at. I'm, I'm going to do another demo now, a little bit, a little bit different to that. Um, I'm going to just close this one down, and I've got another workspace uh, that I already started, um, just to save a little bit of time on the, on this process. So what this workspace does, I just created it earlier. This one's going from MicroStation rather than AutoCAD. Mm -hmm. And it's um, translating from MicroStation to MapInfo format. So it's and MicroStation V8 or V7? I believe that's a good. I, I don't know wh which one this particular one is. I think it might be V7, but um, okay. we, we can read both V8 and V7. Um, yeah. That's not a problem. So let's have a look at the uh, data first of all in, um, in Universal Viewer. So I'm going to open this up. And this time I'm just going to change it to DGN and we'll call it V7. We'll browse to that data. Uh, now where are it's in the water folder again. We'll go with the M25 one. Uh, I can look at the parameters and this time I can split it up by level numbers and level names and, uh, and different things like that. So here we go, we've got that water data. Now what we've got, if I zoom in closely to this, is we don't have any attributes on this on this pipeline data this time. What we've actually got is pipeline data with a little label next to it telling us the, the width of each pipeline. So you can see that some pipelines are 8 inch, some are 4 inch, some are 10 or 6. So the big challenge we've got here is, well, how do we get that information off of the label and attach it to the pipeline. And we can do that with FME uh, very easily uh, within Workbench. So let's go back to, um, oh, the other challenge about this is everything is on the same layer as well. It's all on level one. So uh, <laughs> the other challenge is to split that data out into different levels and layers. OK. So this is the uh, workspace I started with. Um, one of the things I can show you up here is uh, the coordinate system that I've got set for the incoming data. So I basically set it to the right coordinate system. Uh, and FME will reproject this data on the output. Uh, one of the outputs I'm going to write in a moment is KML, and that needs to be in latitude and longitude. So an FME is very good at reprojecting data. We can reproject from any coordinate system pretty much. Um, and MicroStation isn't storing that information uh, natively, so I'm having to define that uh, in, in this setting here. But in quite a few formats, you'll find that it's uh, that information stored automatically, and FME can just pick that information uh, out of the data set. OK, so we're reprojecting the data. The other thing I want to do is, is split it up. So we have a transformer called a geometry filter. And we saw one of these earlier that FME placed automatically. And now I'm just going to drag this into here and connect it up. And basically, a transformer is a is for the new new users is is basically an object that transforms data. It manipulates the data in some way and uh, and and changes it. So I've got a geometry filter in here that's going to be able to let me split the data up into points and lines and arcs. And we have different filters as well. We have an attribute filter which will let you split the data by attribute values and all sorts of different filters like that. Now the other transformer I'm going to use is what we call a neighbor finder. And the neighbor finder transformer is what's going to help us get the label uh, information and attach it to the pipeline. So what I'm going to do is the, let's see, the lines are my base features because they're requesting information. <coughs> Excuse me. And the text features that we've got coming in, they're going to be the candidates. In other words, they're going to supply information. So what we're going to do is find the nearest uh, text label to each pipeline and read that information off there. And there's some different settings I can set within a transformer, just like I can on a reader and writer. And uh, in this case, I can set a maximum distance. So I can say, well, look, if, it's, if the lab nearest label is more than 50 feet away, then just ignore it because that's obviously uh, not related. Right, right. So I'm going to click OK. 
And if, if you wanted to drop a perpendicular and add a vertex to that base feature, I see on that transformer there that you could do that too, which, which sometimes is useful. Um, if, if maybe the point was a meter or something and you wanted to connect the meter right. to the base, yeah, yeah, but here you That's don't. That's right. Yes. The, the other thing I find that useful for is um, transit routes. If you've got a bus stop and a bus route, right. you can yep. find the nearest stop and insert a point on that right route. Yep. Yep. The stop. Yep. yep. That's a great point. <clears throat> okay, so we've got that. Uh, we're basically taking everything that's matched and we're going to write it to the output. So what we've got uh, coming out of here is something called IGDX text string, which is uh, what we call a format attribute. Basically, it's the information about what the value of that text string is. So what I just can simply do is map that to the pipe diameter attribute in my output. So we're basically taking the value of that text string and creating an attribute out of it. The other thing I'm going to do is take the IGDS color, which is the color of the feature, and I'm going to map that out to um, an output attribute as well. And quite often people do that for something like a database like Oracle. You, you write to Oracle and you save all the symbology from your CAD data like the color and the line style. And that way if you ever write the data back from Oracle to your CAD system, you know what the color is going to be and what the symbology was of that data. <coughs> so that's one way that we can round trip um, data from CAD to GIS and then back again. Okay, so that's basically going to write the data. The other thing I can do is I can create multiple different outputs from here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is just add a writer and I'm going to write to KML. So I'm writing to KML as well as map info at the same time. And it's, it's, it's perfectly uh, permissible in FME to do things like this. You can write, read and write multiple inputs and multiple outputs all at the same time. So I'm going to call it pipes.kml. Okay, so now it's saying, well, what, do I want to create a layer in here? And I'm going to just call it water. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to create that with the pipe diameter attributes. So I'm just creating a new data set here from scratch. It doesn't already exist. Um, I'm, I'm just creating it from nothing. And I can just change that to uh, a different diameter. And in fact, I'm going to leave it like that. I don't really need to store color when I write to, uh, to KML. So I'm going to connect that up as well. And there we go. So now I can just run that data and I'm going to be... Wow, that was pretty quick. So I read the data. There's 860 features. You can see the little numbers on here which tell me how many features that came in. So um, you want to talk so about each that? line. The unmatched, so if you collapse the match there, um, one of the, you'll right, see some yes. other tags there. And, um, and, and one of the things FME is used for, of course, as you're transforming data, there, often you find data quality issues. And what you can do with FME is FME just doesn't throw those on map, um, the ones that aren't matched away. It, it, it gives those to you too, so then you can decide you know, what to do with those. So you can see in this case there was 38 yeah. lines that in fact there was no there was no match for the neighbor finder to work with so so you know figuring out correcting 38 lines is a heck of a lot better than um, trying to manually fix the 496 so and so FME can, and then you can do things like identify you know on an, on, an, on another output or one of those outputs where the problem features were and and um, so it can you know greatly uh, help you uh, get things that's going. right and what what I could do is add a writer to write it back to microstation on the output so what I could just output to microstation the the, the unmatched features and then yeah. somebody could the, in, in the CAD department could take that and, and check what the problem was yeah yeah so yeah. yeah that's a great point yeah so what I could do now is I could just open that up in uh, in Google Earth if I wanted to if I look in the output uh, folder, uh, we've got the pipes.kml. I promised to do this and open it up in, um, in Notepad um, just because Don wanted to show that this is in fact uh, XML data that we're writing. And there we go, yeah. Thanks, and, uh, Mark. <laughs> no problem. And a webinar without XML just isn't the same, is it? So. No, it isn't. It isn't. So there we go. So that's probably enough of that. <laughs> yeah. And I could, I could open that up in Google Earth. I'm not going to because 
Google Earth tends to run pretty slowly when I'm doing it in a webinar and uh, yeah. over an internet connection. But um, if you double click, sure, it would come. Yeah. Yes, and I'm sure you can trust me. It uh, it works. In fact, what I could do is open up that tab file uh, in the FME viewer just to prove that yes, we have got the information we wanted, and it's got the pipe diameter attached to each of those different features. And the other thing you'll notice is the original colors that were stored in MicroStation has also been carried through. So some of these are blue, some of them are green, um, some of them are gray. I don't know if that's related to the pipe size. What I could do is yeah. I could say fan out by IGDS color and put them all on a different layer if that's what I wanted to do in the output. Um, very simple to do that. I could just split that up and um, yeah. Oh, and um, in, in KML, obviously, it reprojected the data uh, as well. When I wrote that out to KML, it obviously reprojected it to latitude and longitude.